my name is Kelly, and I'm the owner and creator here at Soyin Shea and thank you so much for joining me for another soap making video. Now I ordered myself a pot of Dead Sea Mud a little while ago and it's been sitting there looking at me wondering when I'm going to turn it into some soap. Well the other day I saw Wicked Lee make her Dead Sea Mud um, soap and I decided now was the time to get my butt into gear. Now Dead Sea Dead Sea Mud has a very unique smell to it. It's quite metallic, almost sulfurish, and that's because of all of the minerals that are in this mud. Not only am I going to use the mud, I'm also going to use some seaweed powder, which also has a very unique smell to it. Um, it does smell of seaweed, does have that sea salt smell, does have that sort of metallic smell to it as well. But and again, it is full of minerals and they're pretty much the same sort of minerals that are in that dead sea mud. And the reason I decided I wanted to put the seaweed in there was so I could add some extra color into the soap and do a little bit of a swirl. Now, because of how unique the smells of these two um, ingredients are, I was struggling to find something to fragrance the soap with, but knew it was gonna need something to calm down that sort of mineral smell of the other ingredients. I didn't think that the essential oils were going to cut it in case they actually faded out of the soap. So I have gone with a fragrance oil called Wood Sage. Yeah, Wood Sage and Sea Salt. And it's got notes of bergamot, fir needle, there is some rosemary, a little bit of oud. And there is also some sea salt and sage in there as well. And the end bar, I, you don't get that um, original fragrance smell as it is out of the bottle but it tones down all those mineral smells and you get this beautiful amberish sort of oody smell out of the soap it is really really nice complements it really well I am really looking forward to being able to have a go at one of these bars especially after I use some of the scraps um, from trimming it and things it really is nice so today we are going to go and make a dead sea mud spa bar let's go all right, so before we jump into making this soap, I'm first of all going to apologize for the reflections that you can see from off of my new work board. I have had a friend actually make this up for me. It is some acrylic with my logo that has been etched into it, and I'm using it mainly to stop people from actually um, stealing my videos. If you've watched any of my past ones, you know this has been an issue. Um, hopefully by working on this board, because my logo is always there, it will deter people, and um, it also means I don't go knocking things around like that little wooden one that I've had up in the corner so I will try and work out a way to stop all these reflections coming up but for now we're going to jump in and make this soap in my bucket I have my usual oil mix and I have got my description or got my recipe down in the description box below and you're welcome to have a go at it for my sodium hydroxide and distilled water solution I am actually working at what for me is full water which is about 35 percent um, water of oil weight or we're working at about 2.5 water to one sodium hydroxide and that is because from what I saw when Wicked Lee using the Dead Sea Mud that it does move a little bit quicker and I want just a little bit of time so I can put a very basic swirl into my soap so I thought we'll add that little bit of extra water in there just to help me along so as always I am going to pour my um, my life solution into my oils I'm going to mix it until it just comes together or as an emulsion and then I'm going to split it up because I am going to do a couple of layers in this soap and those layers are going to have different mineral rich additives in them so let's get making well that has well and truly been christened <laughs> I can't believe how much of that I completely missed from putting into the jug. It was one of the reasons I asked for this to be done in acrylic because I knew that um, spilling stuff like soap on it wasn't going to bother it. I actually did spray this down and sanitize it all before I started working so that is fine to put back into the buckets. And when she did the engraving for me on this it is all actually done on the reverse underneath so none of my soap will actually stick into any of those um, 
those lines so that is a really good that she was able to do that for me all right so I think that should be enough I'm gonna try and pour a little bit more hopefully won't make that much mess okay that is looking good right so I am going to work first of all in this layer here all right, so into this jug here, what I'm going to add in is this little mix. I have got this darker sort of brownie colour. That is some Australian olive green clay. It is said to be one of the strongest clays out there in terms of minerals. And it is very good for supposedly helping to detoxify the skin and is meant to be very good for oily skin as well and being a sort of sparish bar I thought that would be a really good additive to include and then this greener one here that is some seaweed powder and I'm including that because it does actually have a lot of the same minerals as what the dead sea mud is going to have in it and I just thought it will add a nice little bit of colour into the middle of this soap so I don't just have a brown soap. Into the big bucket here, I have my Dead Sea mud. This stuff is very, very rich in minerals, including magnesium, calcium and potassium and all these other things which are super good for the skin. And I am using it at about 10% of my oil weights in here. The Dead Sea um, mud is said to um, help to restore and regenerate skin and it's also great for detoxifying. So hopefully this will be a lovely spa-like um, bar of soap. What I'm going to do is mix these ingredients in to both of these. Then I'm going to add in my fragrance and then we will get to pouring into our mould. grab a mold in here I'm actually quite impressed that is really quite fluid I was really worried that it was going to go uh, really thick on me quite quickly so I, I'm very very impressed with that now it could simply be the difference between our recipes from what I've seen with other people as well as wickedly using that dead sea mud um, she does use some goat's milk in her soap and I have always experienced a thickening or a quicker trace of my soap when I have included a milk into um, my soap recipe so that could be one of the reasons why this is staying a very nice consistency for me now one thing I will say about this is that I can definitely smell the minerals from off of that mud and they are overpowering the um, Oh, what am I trying to say? The fragrance oil. So hopefully as this sits and cures, that fragrance oil will actually start to pop through. But I am getting that sort of sea salty smell out of it. Now, as I said, this is playing really, really well. I was hoping to be able to do um, layers, but I think I may have to change my mind. I might just leave this for a couple of minutes, see if this will set up. If it doesn't, we'll come back and we will do a... Uh, a swirl like a drop swirl through it instead all right that is actually starting to firm up a little bit so what I'm now going to do because you can see this one is thickening up a lot more and that would just be because it's got that seaweed powder and clay in there is I am going to very very gently pour this on top it is going to sink a little bit but I'm not too worried because as I said I'm going to put a swirl through this as well but if I can get majority of it to sit on and make a little bit of a, a layer, that will be really good. We'll just see what happens. I think it is pretty much going to sink in there. So I don't think my original idea was going to work. But you know what? It is still going to be such a beautiful bar of soap with all of those different minerals through here I'm kind of thinking this may even make a wonderful facial soap so we'll see what happens that's definitely sunk down and not made a layer even with gently putting that on there now, probably if I'd waited an extra 30 seconds or so it would have actually firmed up the way I was hoping 
but at least that's going to sit on the top of there. So we get that one poured in and then I'm just going to go and get my hanger tool. Alright, so to do my swirl in this one I've decided rather than using my hanger I am going to use a chopstick and I am just going to do a very, very simple swirl through it like this. So get to the end, we'll just turn that around. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is just pile a little bit of this on here. What I realised while I was waiting for this to um, set up a little bit was that when I calculated how much I wanted in here, I calculated this to be two kilos of oil. I generally work with this mold anywhere between 1.7 and 2.2 kilos depending upon what I am trying to achieve. So with this one I was wanted just a slightly higher top um, whereas sometimes if I'm doing those flat tops with the decorative pieces on the top I work at about 1.8 and then the rest of the sort of embeds really build up the rest of the weight of that soap. And I thought well we'll work this one at two kilos and then I completely forgot that I was actually adding quite a bit of dead sea mud into this. Um, so what I have now got here because I've got so much of this batter left over I am going to pour this into here and then I will make some little sample bars as well to give away. Okay, so with keeping this one simple, I have got a stainless steel teaspoon. And all I'm going to do is just put very, very simple texture onto the top of each of these. So I'm just digging my spoon in and moving up and across each of my soap bars here. If you want to see someone do this one really, really well, check out Future Primitive Soapings. The way she does the tops of her soaps are just so pretty and I've just never been able, able to replicate what she does with a spoon on the top of her soaps. So I'm actually going to come in from this side as well. So just again, popping the spoon in and just pulling that soap up and over. And it just gives it such a simple yet elegant sort of appeal to that soap. And I think because of all the really rich ingredients in this one, I really don't need um, anything too fancy with this particular soap. So I'm really pleased with how that is looking right now. And just as a little bit of a final thing, let's get the lid off this bucket. I have some big crystal um, bath salt rocks. I'm not going to put a lot on here because I really don't want it to um, sweat on the top of the soap. All I'm going to do is put a very, very thin line just down the middle. And because they are quite chunky, I don't want um, a lot on here so that people actually don't like the feel of them. I just want something on there to indicate that it is full of lots of great sea sort of minerals. So we'll just sprinkle that right down the top here. It is looking really nice. It is starting to lose that kind of mineral smell that I first smelt and the fragrance oil is starting to actually shine through. So I'm really looking forward to being able to cut this one tomorrow. So let's finish that off. I seem to have got a bit more heavy handed as I've gone down that end. So we'll just pop a few more in there and that is looking perfect. Okay, so here is the Dead Sea Mud Spa Soap. I am going to leave this one sit overnight um, to set up and then we'll come back tomorrow and we'll cut it open to see if um, we've got anything on the inside here. I'm just going to give that a bit of a spray. While it is sitting here, I am going to keep a very close eye on it and if I think that it's going to start heating up, I'm going to pop it into the fridge and that is just to stop the heat from destroying any of the sort of minerals that can be found in that dead sea mud and also the seaweed powder. So I will be back later to show you the inside of this soap and see if we actually got any pretty swirls at all.
So I am back to cut open this Dead Sea Mud Spa Bar. Now when I um, took this out of the mould and I gave it a little bit of a trim, some of these sort of like little bits of scrap soap that I got off it, I rolled them up into a ball and then I used it under the water. Now you're never going to get the true feel of soap when it's at this very early stage, but it was so creamy and beautiful to use. I can't wait until this is actually cured and I can actually use a proper bar of it. I'm really looking forward to being able to use it on my face as well as the rest of the body. Now the fragrance on this one, it's a little bit odd. I was really, really particular when I was choosing the fragrance for this soap because I knew that the mud and the seaweed was going to really overpower anything that went into this, which is why I picked that wood, um, sage and sea salt because it's quite an earthy tone. And although you don't get that sort of fragrance oil come through in this, it's taken away that real um, metallic smell that the mud and the seaweed has um, and has given it a really nice woody sort of smell. So I think it was the perfect choice. Now what I've done is I've laid it on its side so that the salts are facing me um, and that's it. the wires don't drag the salt through the bars. So let's start getting this one cut open and then we'll see if we did actually manage to achieve any swirls on the inside of this one. So I'm going through, it's probably still a little bit too soft for cutting, but I've got so much to do getting ready to do some markets. I'm almost through and let's take a look. All right, so I'll grab this one from off the end here. It is still a little bit tacky, but I am really, really liking that. I can see that we are going to have a, um, a lightening of this soap. Usually you get a darker sort of ring on the outside, but I'm really pleased that it's going to go this color. Now that I've cut it open, I'm getting a lot more of that sort of mud smell. And I'm hoping that once this actually sits and airs for a little bit, um, it will actually start to develop that nice woody smell from off the fragrance oil. It's not that bad of a swirl in there. It wasn't, I was aiming to get layers with a nice wave in it, but we'll try that on another soap. But I'm pretty happy with how that is looking on the inside. I really do hope that this lightens all the way through. So while this sits on the curing rack, what I'll do is keep an eye on it. And then if you follow along with me on Instagram, I'll post pictures of this one once it is ready to be wrapped and go onto the um, onto the shelves for sale. And then you can see what color that this one goes. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what that mud does. Okay, so I'm pretty sure all of these bars are going to be pretty much the same on the inside. This is a little bit more of what I was trying to get, sort of that yin and yang swirl, just combining the two um, different um, colours together very, very gently. For me, this soap wasn't so much about making it highly decorative and um, all that sort of thing. This one, I wanted to be a really luxurious bar and spa bar style of soap and really highlight the actual ingredients in here of that dead sea mud and the seaweed powder as well as the Australian olive green clay as well. And I think that um, the, the, such a simple design on this one is really gonna showcase those ingredients. So I hope you have enjoyed watching how I make my Dead Sea Mud Spa Bar. If you did, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. If you've got any questions, I will certainly get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And until the next video, I hope you have a great one and I'll see you then. Bye.